A former EU lawmaker implicated in a corruption scandal that's engulfed the European Parliament has agreed to cooperate with investigators. Belgian prosecutors say former MEP Antonio Panzeri has agreed to work with authorities in exchange for a reduced sentence. He is in detention in Brussels. And he's one of four people with links to the Parliament under investigations. They are all charged with participating in the activities of a criminal organization, money laundering and corruption. And the shock runs deep in the EU Parliament, even just weeks after the corruption scandal surrounding the then Vice President Kaili became public. DW's Alexandra von Namen reports. They are back at work in Strasbourg, but not back to business as usual. The corruption scandal, dubbed as Qatargate, continues to roil the European Parliament, threatening to undermine the very credibility of the institution. A lot of damage has been done to the Parliament due to that corruption case. But of course, it's corruption, it's a crime. Uh, so justice, the Belgian and European justice, will make uh, their job. Whenever you meet people, they ask you about the corruption case and not about the political work. And I think this is uh, a big damage uh, in the reputation, in the work of more than 700 members. In December, Belgium police raided homes and offices of incumbent and former members of the parliament. Bags of cash were found. Four people, among them Eva Kaili, one of the parliament's vice presidents, were arrested. They have been accused of taking bribes in exchange for favors for Qatar and Morocco, accusations the countries deny. Heidi Hautala is a Finnish politician and, as Kaili used to be, vice president of the European parliament. She did not uh, fit very well into the opinions of uh, her other social democratic colleagues in the Bureau of the European Parliament, where we were colleagues. So that I could observe that um, she had her, her own way. Some questions about if she had some sort of private interests, maybe, sometimes went through my head. As a consequence of the scandal, the parliament's president, Roberta Metzola, has proposed new rules against corruption, including better control of who has access to the chamber and its members. MEPs would also have to declare their assets and who they meet when discussing legislation. A good start, says Daniel Freund, who is representing German Greens. But he points out that the problem was never a lack of rules. Because lots of the rules we have are good. Compared to the member states, we have reasonably high standards of transparency and integrity in the EU institutions, but we also need to enforce them. And for that, we need an independent body uh, to check on, on ethics rules. Would an independent body do the trick? There are different proposals on the table, with some members of the European Parliament warning the freedom of their mandate needs to be protected too. But given the seriousness of the accusations, most here say now is the time for action to restore the trust lost in the scandal. Our Brussels Bureau Chief Alexander van Namen filed that report. She joins us now from Strasbourg. Alexandra, what more can you tell us about the deal that Panzeri uh, has cut? What was his role in the scandal? Well, the former Italian member of the European Parliament is a central figure in the whole case, and he has struck a plea deal with prosecutors to exchange information for a reduced sentence. And uh, the prosecutors are hoping that he could share essential, crucial information for the ongoing investigation into whether foreign countries such as Qatar or Morocco uh, tried to illegally influence the Parliament's decision. According to his lawyer, he already admitted to uh, have participated in a criminal organization. He already admitted to be one of the leaders of this um, organization and to, to have bribed uh, people. Uh, and he, uh, according to Belgian reports in the media, already said that he, has, uh, that he had given 120,000 euros to another lawmaker and incumbent member of the European uh, Parliament, Mark Tarabella. Uh, this lawmaker is already under investigation and the prosecutors already ask for his immunity to be lifted. However, the whole uh, case, the whole new development is of course a bombshell because everyone here is waiting for new details to emerge. And of course, the question on your mind is whether there are some lawmakers here in Strasbourg who are getting nervous about that.
Mm. Well, Qatargate has cast a shadow over the opening session of the EU Parliament, but it's not the only order of business. What else is on the agenda today there? The bloc's foreign policy is on the agenda and here in particular, of course, Russia's war on Ukraine with lawmakers expected to approve a non-binding resolution that would call for the establishment of a special tribunal to prosecute uh, war crimes uh, allegedly committed by uh, Russia in Ukraine. Ukraine has been calling for such a special tribunal for months now and there is a growing support for this idea. Ursula von der Leyen, the European European Commission president, who is also here today, is one of the supporters, uh, or uh, the German foreign minister Baerbock, for instance. Uh, and uh, such a tribunal would be needed to prosecute alleged uh, war crimes committed allegedly by Russia, uh, because the International Crimean Court cannot be active here because Russia is not a member of this court. Our Brussels Bureau Chief Alexander von Namen, they're reporting from Strasbourg. Thank you, Alexander.